Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we have a very curious video title. We're gonna react to The Jin is Your Friend. Don't say bad things about him. By the channel Love Allah 328 from my personal experience coming from an orthodox christian background we have angels and demons the angels being the good guys the demons being the bad guys on the other hand in the islamic description of the jinn you don't only have good and bad entities but everything in between and this confirms my experience with alex back in the day i gathered a lot of experiences with my rooms and whatnot and in those realms i saw different entities and plenty of them were neither really good nor really bad but very similar to us humans somewhere in between this is why i'm very curious about today's video let's have a look you know many times we associate we we think that evil is to inherently be attributed to the jinn that all of the jinn are evil all of the jinn are bad because obviously when we talk about the jinn usually we talk about them in the context of the shayateen of the devils and protecting ourselves from them. And as we said, the first thing we should do is talk about their rights upon us. And particularly, remember that there are believers amongst the jinn. We have people, we have uh, some amongst the jinn that we should actually feel an affinity towards, even though we don't reach out to them and even though we don't see them. So we should be extra careful when dealing with them. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu narrates that a, a deputation of jinn came to the Prophet ﷺ and they even complained to the Prophet ﷺ. Ya Muhammad, your community, your ummah, they cleaned themselves with bones and with dung and with charcoal. And they said, Wa inna Allah ja'ala lana fiha rizqa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed sustenance for us in those things. So, you know, so this is harming us because we're not able to use those things. Now, obviously, cleaning themselves here means after using the restroom. They didn't have toilet paper back then, so they would basically use whatever was dry and whatever was hard uh, to do, you know, to clean themselves. And the Prophet ﷺ, after that incident, after that encounter with the jinn, he forbade the ummah from using those particular three things. In another hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ, he actually pointed out to the people the remains of their charcoals and he, and he warned them to be wasteful or to use them in a way uh, that's inappropriate. And Rasulullah ﷺ, he said that the jinn asked him about what their risk was, what is halal for them, what's permissible for them to consume, what's permissible provision for them. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, every bone on which the name of Allah has been mentioned will have something on it for you. So, so you know, for us, what our, uh, you know, halal food is that which has been slaughtered in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them, uh. the bones that have had the name of Allah mentioned upon them. So when you eat and you mention the name of Allah upon your food, you're actually, you know, you might be doing sadaqah without even realizing it because the jinn would consume it after you. And the Prophet said, and the droppings are for your animals. So when he said your animals, he means the animals amongst the jinn. And as we said, it's established mm -hmm. that the jinn have animals amongst them. And it's interesting because the Prophet he actually mentioned to the Sahaba that this is for, in, you know, to leave these things, to, you know, to not use these things to clean yourselves. He says, فَإِنَّهُ زَادُ إِخْوَانِكُمْ مِنَ الْجِنْ These are the provisions for your brothers from the jinn. So he's even saying, ikhwanikum min al jinn. And it's important for us to remember that again, they are believers, and as they are believers, they are brothers and sisters to us, and we wish well for them. And, and when we say, ibadillah. That is very interesting. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I had previously <laughs> experiences, and yet again, guys, disclaimer here I'm not advocating for some, especially not if they're illegal within your country. Back in the day when I did. I for example, I did it on legal grounds in South America in a community that uses Ayyuka as a sacrament. So it was all legal the way that I did it. On top of that, I want to inform you yet again that I'm simply a Christian reacting to Islamic videos. So I'm not a scholar talking about jinns, but about my own personal experience. We have to clarify this. So that all of the way, yes, it is correct. Within my psych 
experiences, I saw metaphysical beings that were in direct contact with God. They believed in God and were even closer to him than many of us people. This is something that I encountered in my spiritual experiences. Salihin, the righteous, when we make dua for them in our prayers, we're including them as well. And even when the Prophet Sallallahu you know, he sometimes he made this distinction very clear, even in Ramadan, recognize that there are jinn that are fasting in Ramadan as well. There are jinn that have their iftar and so on and so forth. And so the Prophet said, Sufidat al Shayateen wa maradatul jinn. That when Ramadan comes, the shayateen are chained away and the evil ones amongst the jinn. Okay, the believing jinn are fasting just like us. Uh, when Surah Al Najm uh, was revealed, the very famous incident where everyone made sujood as Surah Al Najm was being recited. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that, the, that every human being, pagan or believer, and every jinn, pagan or believer, as they heard uh, Surah Al Najm recited at that time, they all fell in sujood. The Prophet ﷺ, he also said to us to raise our voices in adhan because he said, every human being and every jinn and every rock and every tree that hears that adhan will testify for you on the day of judgment. And some of the ulama, they said even the disbelievers would testify for you on the day of judgment, the most wicked of humans and jinn. Why? Because this was a means of conveyance of the message to them. When they heard your adhan, even though they were disbelievers, they would be forced to testify on the day of judgment that they heard your adhan. So you have to be conscious of that, subhanAllah, even as you're reading Quran, even as you're reading adhan, you don't know who's hearing you. And remember that even the Prophet ﷺ in Ta'if, when human beings turned him away, some of the first believers were jinn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions them in Surah Al-Ahqaf and in Surah Al-Jinn. That the Prophet ﷺ thought that he was completely rejected in this incident of Ta'if. And you know, SubhanAllah, that's really something powerful that when you're doing da'wah, even if the human being in front of you rejects it, how do you know that a jinn didn't hear you doing da'wah and accept it? And so Allah says there was a group of jinn that heard you يَسْتَمِعُونَ Quran. They were listening to you recite the Qur'an. That is really interesting. I didn't know that Islam had this metaphysical concept of conveying the message even to the jinns. Within Christianity, when you're preaching the gospel, you're simply preaching it to humans, not to angels or demons. Very interesting. And this was a Jewish group of jinn from the area of Yemen. They went back to their people Jewish and they jinns. said, إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا We heard a beautiful recitation, an amazing recitation. And they, they mentioned that it guides to the truth and that this confirms that which has come to Musa alayhi salam. So this was a believing group of jinn. And again, they believed in the Prophet ﷺ when human beings rejected him in Ta'if. The Prophet ﷺ, he also, um, he says, لَقَدْ قَرَأْتُ عَلَى الْجِنِّ لَيْلَةَ الْجِنِّ That I recited Qur'an to the jinn on the night of al-jinn. And the night of al-jinn was a night that the Prophet ﷺ couldn't be found and some of the Sahaba thought that he was killed. But then they saw the Prophet ﷺ come back and Rasulullah ﷺ mentioned that he was reciting to the jinn. And he says, فَكَانُوا أَحْسَنَ مَرْدُودًا مِنْكُمْ They were better in their response than you. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, what are you speaking about? He said, I recited to them Surah Ar-Rahman. And when I came to, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Then which of the favors of your Lord will you, human beings and jinn, deny? They responded and they said, لا بشيء من نعم. It's one of my favorite surahs, by the way. That there is nothing from your favors, O oh Allah, that we deny. فلك الحمد. And to you belongs all praise. So the Prophet said, Again, extremely interesting because it confirms my experience. That doesn't mean that therefore it is true. However, this is what I witnessed by myself. Yes, the entities that I saw were truly thankful to God, to the source of all creation, so to speak. And they were in eternal gratefulness in comparison to us yet again, because we are not grateful. Quite often, we have to remember, we have to remind ourselves of being grateful to God. Surah Al-Rahman they actually responded more appropriately than you did. And Allah mentions in Surah Al-Rahman, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Whoever fears the standing in front of his Lord on the Day of Judgment will have two gardens. And Allah mentions that for jinn and for man. And so they would enter into Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He even mentions mates for them in Surah Al-Rahman as well. So they would enter into Jannah. And when they enter into Jannah, in fact, that Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said they would enter in a different creation and you would be able to see them. Okay, so you would be able to actually interact with them 
in Jannah and they would be in a different creation. They'd enter in a perfect- Yes, the beings that I witnessed were in different forms than us. I witnessed beings that were made out of pure light than other beings that were made out of something that really resembled laser lights even. Then other beings that appeared to be made out of smoke. And then on the other hand, beings that defied every physical law, every logic within our existence. Just as human beings enter in a perfect way, because it's only a test in this world that you're unable uh, to see them. And you know, lastly, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentions that, that there is, you know, there's this dispute that takes place as well amongst the believers and the disbelievers amongst them. There is da'wah, there is rejection, there is acceptance. It all exists amongst the jinn as well. Those dynamics are there. In Christianity, we say as above, so below. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact revealed an ayah particularly about a dispute that took place amongst the jinn that we didn't have access to uh, except through this verse of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he says regarding a group of jinn that used to be worshipped by their people, but then they became Muslim. Okay, so this was a group of evil jinn, their people used to worship them, and then they accepted Islam, the ones who were being worshipped. When they accepted Islam, the people refused, their people, the, the jinn, refused to stop calling upon them and refused to stop doing ibadah to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ يَبْتَغُونَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمُ الْوَسِيلَ أَيُّهُمْ أَقْرَبْ That those to whom they call upon, those who are being called upon, themselves seek the means or access to their Lord as to who amongst them will be nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So subhanAllah, there's da'wah, there's rejection, there's acceptance. And you never know who's listening to you and you never know who's hearing you out as you do da'wah. And you never know who amongst your brothers and your sisters from the jinn you are benefiting with your good actions. And you never know, they might testify for you on the Day of Judgment and you might just meet them in Jannah. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. Very interesting explanation that confirms my own personal experiences in the past, as I said throughout the video. Moreover, the last part of the video that even the jinns are attracted towards jinns that are closer to their Lord, reminded me of my talk with Sheikh Uthman Ibn Farooq, in which he explained to me that he was sitting on a plane next to an atheist and that plane hit turbulences. And of course, the atheist turned around to the sheikh and told him, hey, please pray for us. So subconsciously, no matter which belief we hold consciously, we are attracted to people that are closer to God, closer to the source, closer to the light. I would make the argument that the whole life is about exactly this purpose, getting out of the darkness and closer to the light, getting closer to God. We always have that option. We can get closer to God and like that, God will come closer to us. But in the end, and it is our own decision to make. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support my work via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for that. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.